climate change conference entitled Vegan Organic for Prosperity and to Save the Planet from Climate Change was held on October 22, 2009 in Jakarta, the capital city of Indonesia. The purpose of the conference was to raise awareness on the grave issues of global warming and the most effective and key solution to halt it in its tracks, the vegan diet. Participating dignitaries included Indonesia's Assistant Minister for Economics and Poverty Alleviation, Ms. Sri Hudiastudi. Also speaking as presenters were Ms. Hira Jamtani, an associate of the Third World Network based in Bali, Indonesia. Indonesian naval physician, Dr. Anton Budiono. And Professor Aras Ananta, senior researcher at the Institute of Southeast Asian Studies in Singapore. Guest of Honor, Supreme Master Ching Hai graciously answered questions from the distinguished audience members on topics such as the vegan trend to stop global warming and ways to implement organic vegan farming. We now invite you to join us for part three of the eight-part rebroadcast of the video conference with Supreme Master Ching Hai entitled Vegan Organic for Prosperity and to Save the Planet from Climate Change held on October 22, 2009 on Jakarta, Indonesia. Since 1970, droughts of greater intensity and longer duration have been observed across ever wider regions of the planet, especially in the tropics and subtropics. We cannot afford to waste water. Meat production uses massive amounts of water, taking up to 1,200 gallons of fresh water to produce just one serving of beef. Research by University of Chicago professors, Dr. Gaiden Asher and Dr. Pamela Martin found that being vegetarian for one year reduces emissions by 1.5 tons when compared to the standard American diet. This reduction is 50% greater than that of switching from an SUV to a hybrid car. So, being veg is more effective than changing your car. In contrast, a full vegan meal requires only 98 gallons of water. Currently, most of our food and water is being consumed by the meat industry instead of by people. However, there is still hope. It is such a relief that solution is simple. Just be vegan. And next, we will be hearing from Ms. Hira Jantani. She will share with us the benefits of an organic vegan diet for improving the welfare of farmers and society as a whole. Ms. Hira Jantani is an associate of the Third World Network based in Bali, Indonesia. She is a researcher on environmental issues and is very passionate about her work. Let's give a warm welcome to Ms. Hira Jamtani. Selamat sore, Om Swastiastu, good evening. Ladies and gentlemen, friends, I just want to tell you a very sad story, one of those horror stories that you hear when you go out in the fields and meet farmers, okay? A farmer called Made Jojol in Bali, on this beautiful island where I live, one day had just sprayed his fields with pesticides. Half an hour later, when he was eating, or he had wanted to eat, he fell down and fainted. Of course, there was panic. Nobody knew why. Nobody beat him up, nothing. Just go, fell down and fainted. And of course, the family was in a panic and they tried to bring him to the hospital. And he actually died on the way to the hospital. Being in a village, of course, there is this distance between the village where he lives and the nearest hospital. The doctor diagnosed him as being intoxicated. Poisoning, in other words. Three million people are poisoned every year in the world because of what we use in our fields. And many of us sometimes cannot relate 
to who produce the food and what, how they produce it to what we eat, especially in the cities. And this is the story about that, which would then relate to global warming issues. So what we are going to share with you today is the poison in our food and the poverty among farmers, because these are related. Please remember when you eat your food, it is the farmers that produce your food. So we need to relate to farmers. And why and what is organic agriculture? Also, how does it relate to health, income, and the environment? So when we talk about the environment, we will relate it to climate change later on. What is happening is, as I said, we are often not aware that we eat food produced by those who are intoxicated by pesticides. Now, if a farmer can fall down, faint, and die, can you imagine the kind of food that is on our table? Yeah, we we're talking about farmers who grow our food and dying because of using these pesticides. Then also our food is produced using chemicals that do not provide nutrition, although sometimes people think of it as medicine for the plants. It is not providing any nutrition, but it actually poses danger to our body. But most importantly, what we do in, in this so-called modern agriculture is we are poisoning the very resources that we use for farming, our soil and our water. Not only do we have shortage of water, but that little water available is intoxicated. It is poisoned because of what chemicals we put in the water system. And in doing so, what we do is we are endangering our future generation if they survive the climate change. Okay? We are endangering our future generation because of climate change. And if they survive the climate change, we still have to deal with this poisoning of the resources. So what we have is um, nobody ever counts, no economist anywhere in the world tells us how much money we spend, or what is the loss of people that are poisoned by pesticides. These are pictures of what happened to our farmers uh, when they are poisoned by pesticides. And the residue is even in mother's milk, and the research is here in Indonesia, not anywhere else. Okay, these are the figures that we have. At least 14 million farmers we know are intoxicated, although the potential is about 40 million farmers. And also it has been found that in uh, central Java, women farmers also are prone, 79% more prone to poisoning, uh, to having miscarriage because of the poison. So as I said, we are also endangering our own children in the process. Now, when we talk to the government and the scientists who develop this, they say, well, but we need more production in order to feed people. The big question is then, why are people still hungry? We saw the video, it was 800 million. This slide was made for more in Asia, and out of that 800 million, 500 million are in Asia, the continent where we live. These are hungry people. And when you see who are the hungry people, you will be surprised that it is the farmers who grow our food that also go hungry. Can you, can you see the logic of the way our economy is having? Huh? So 400 million farm households actually go hungry despite the advertisement on chemical fertilizers and chemical pesticides that this will give you welfare. If they are healthy, then how do you answer these statistics? Yeah? So the very people who grow the food which we eat in the cities are actually hungry. Yeah? Please, please keep that in mind because it relates to how we treat our farmers. And because of the inequity, this whole modern system actually benefits the large farms and not the small farms. And because of the inequity, the smaller farmers go into debt. So this is what happens, yeah? So we have more production but less welfare. So now, 
The solution is quite simple as any other solution. It's a matter of whether we want to do it or not. And that is organic agriculture. Now, what is organic agriculture? Most people think it is just, you know, you, you, you don't use chemicals, but it's more than that. You don't use chemicals, you don't use genetically modified organisms, and most importantly, you use local resources, whether it is the seeds or the uh, uh, non-chemical fertilizers. The most important thing is that it is sustainable in the sense that you do not pollute and you do not use the resources unnecessarily. So it, it goes well into the future. That's why we call it sustainable organic farming. That is actually the right term. And one of the most important thing is that it provides farmers welfare. Remember, we talk about farmers not being in welfare. And that farmers become independent in terms of the production uh, input. So when we look at organic agriculture, we look at it as a holistic thing, not just substituting the agrochemicals with uh, non-chemicals. It is also a matter of how do we make farmers' welfare and how do we uh, ensure that the consumers get healthy food and affordable we all want affordable food, but we also don't want to make the farmers poor, right? Okay. So I'm just giving you some of the definitions, yeah? Now, what and how, again, the organic farming. We were talking about climate change, and 18% of the greenhouse gas emission, actually, in the entire world, 18 to 20, actually, comes from agriculture, and that is the industrialized agriculture. A whole chunk of it is meat industry. So it is rightly said, if you, if you change the diet, but you must also change the industrialization of the agriculture, then you actually do a lot of mitigation and adaptation for climate change. And it provides safe and healthy process. It reduces the poison in the environment. Of course, we hope it not only reduces, but it eliminates totally the poison. We hope to do that. And please remember that we need to also increase the income of farmers. That's how we look at it. Okay? In terms of health, because of the less poisoning or in places where the chemicals have not penetrated, then you actually have food which is totally devoid of chemical substances, then you have safe food. But what is more important is you have more nutritional food. This has been proven in various journals scientifically that organic food has more nutrition because it does not retain so much water. If you keep organic food more than one week, it still stays compared to the conventional uh, farming method. Okay, and in that process, you also have a healthier wildlife. In Europe and in the US, people are having trouble now because many vegetables and fruits are not uh, well developed because they have lost the insects that are supposed to do the pollination. And why do they lose these insects? Because they have spread pesticides everywhere. I will give you the example of durian. Kalau tidak ada kelelawar, tidak ada durian. So if we don't have the bats, you don't get durian to fruit. But if you spray pesticides, then the bats are also poisoned. So you don't get durian harvest. And that is very dangerous. Unless you do it, of course, you put the pollen into the durian flowers. Kalau di bahasa Indonesia, jadi dikawinkan secara manual, gitu, baru bisa. Tapi kalau tidak, kita perlu kelelawar. This is what one of the farmers who um, have switched to organic has said. He actually said that now we know we need healthy food. And when we produce healthy food, we as farmers are also healthy. People are always telling me, can you really live on organic farming? Can Indonesia survive on organic farming? And we see that there are indications, yes, we can, as long as we do it properly. 
And uh, this is an analysis from Africa uh, that you see. Uh, there's an increase of productivity by 116%. But also worldwide, there's been a, a research over 20 years worldwide. The cereal yields have gone up from 50 to 200%. And, and the third one is important. In developing countries like Indonesia, actually 80% higher harvest. So we do have evidence. As long as you combine the new technology, the agro-ecosystem, and you provide independence to the farmers and policy support. So many of you who are from government people here, the policy support is very much needed. So I'm just giving you an example of what is called the system rice intensification. It uses less water, it's organic based, it uses only local based materials. And if we do this, we actually save water 46%, but also we don't have to open up more lands for rice. You have less land, but more productivity. This is the environmental benefit we retain biodiversity and we retain wildlife. One of the things that surprised me when I saw the fruit plate is, of course, the imported fruits on that plate. <laughs> okay. Because uh, many of us have lost the taste for the diversity of fruits that we have because of the way we produce food in a monoculture way, which then in includes the uh, chemicals. So when you go back to organic agriculture, you also create a bigger base for other seeds. I've seen it in Bali. When we tell farmers to go back to organic agriculture, the old seeds survive. They start collecting the old seeds. And these seeds are actually adapted to climate change. They use less water and all that. You know, you, you don't have to do a big experiment in the lab. You actually talk to the farmers and they tell you which seeds are available. This is another study in the Philippines. What we are going to say is that it is not just the income, but the fact that farmers are more organized and they become more independent. That's why I use the word welfare. It's not just about eating, but it's about feeling that you are at the right direction in life. And I think that's important. Okay, so my message is that when we, aside from making sure that the soil is healthy, we also need to make sure that the food growers are in welfare, which creates welfare for ourselves. And this welfare is based on local organic agriculture, on local knowledge system, seeds and food. We've forgotten this. When we talk about climate change, when you switch to this, you actually reduce a lot of emission. We eat fruits that are grown in our locality rather than buy imported fruits, for instance. That is very important. Okay? Now, in line with the theme of today's seminar, having been a vegetarian for the past 20 years, I can easily relate to the theme vegan and organic. Yeah? If you eat less meat, it's true that you, you reduce emission a lot. If you eat less meat and organic, you reduce even more emission. If you eat less meat, organic, and local, you reduce even more emission. And this is a solution that you can do at the individual level, that you don't wait for the experts or the government to do anything. It's a choice. You can make this choice. And I think the seminar is very valuable in teaching us towards that, that you make that choice because 80% of the emission in industrialized farming actually goes into meat production. And one of the reasons why I became vegetarian was the inequity in which animals are fed with grains that should have gone to humans. Yeah? So you're actually depriving people when you eat meat, depriving hungry people of their grain. And I think that's a serious issue that we need to take up ethically at our own individual life. Okay, so now we do have a vision. You know, we, we saw Ibu Amanda's uh, presentation about climate change, how bad it is. 
And so we want to see our children like this. Refugees in 2050. Everything now the experts say 2050. Or do we want to see this? Okay. The vision is your choice. I have made a choice. I want to see this baby grow in an organic way. So you make your choice. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Hira Jamdani, for sharing with us your valuable insights. Ladies and gentlemen, we are delighted and honored that you have set aside some of your precious time and joined us today to learn more about threats, the causes, and the most effective solutions to curb climate change. As we have heard, just an organic vegan diet improves our lifestyle both ecologically and compassionately. In support for Ms. Hira, if you, ladies and gentlemen, if you look in front of here, we actually have locally organic uh, party plants here, and look how beautiful they are. So we should really support our local organic farming. Um, perhaps you might even want to try at home, at your back garden, yeah? Thank you. Organic fruits and vegetables are not just better for the environment. They contain no pesticides and fertilizers, uses lower resources, and therefore are healthier for you as well. For more information, please consult the links available on Supreme Master Television website at www.suprememastertv.com. There is abundance of free information available on the internet that is compiled by research of world-acclaimed scientists and reputable organizations. And now, ladies and gentlemen, in one minute, it will be time for us, all of us, to take a short prayer. It's our tradition, and we would like to invite audience members to pray for a sustainable planet for all. After the prayer, special guests of honor will share some very important messages. Thank you very much. Thank you. Gentlemen, distinguished guests, and worldwide viewers, welcome back to our seminar, Vegan Organic for Prosperity and to Save the Planet from Climate Change. We need to raise awareness amongst all people, both here in Indonesia and around the world. Let us spread the word to our friends and relatives. We pray that many more will join us in changing their daily eating habits and adopt a frugal lifestyle. If everyone on this planet makes the effort and changes, food shortage problems will be greatly solved and greatly accelerating our planet's healing process. Time is crucial. We must all do our part to save the planet. Being vegan is not only for prosperity and posterity, but it is also very healthy for us. It gives me great pleasure to introduce our next speaker, Dr. Anton Budiono who, as a medical doctor, is someone who cares very much about both our health and the health of our planet. Dr. Budiono graduated from the University of Indonesia in 1986. He is a Navy doctor and an expert in natural therapy. His talk today is titled, Vegan Raw Food as the Best Alternative Diet for Human Health. Let us welcome Dr. Anton Budiono. Baik, selamat sore. Hadirin yang saya hormati. Uh, saya akan membawakan beberapa keuntungan yang menjadi vegetarian dipandang dari aspek kesehatan. Ada dari pembicara yang lain memberikan pandangan bahwa oh, vegetarian itu memang perlu berdasarkan Mungkin dari emisi atau dari apa sudut pandang yang lain, saya akan bawakan menurut pandangan aspek kesehatan. Ini adalah bagian besar dari pengalaman saya waktu praktek di klinik. Biasanya banyak pertentangan antara, oh apakah perlu jadi vegetarian atau tidak. Demikian juga saya waktu waktu belum jadi vegetarian, perlu tidak kita jadi vegetarian? Apakah tidak makan daging itu katanya lemes? Nah itu saya coba 
jajaki bagaimana mencari jawaban yang benar. Nah, kemudian uh, dalam hati kecil saya berpikir bahwa saya menjadi, harus menjadi satu seorang yang makan sayur. Kenapa? Karena saya tidak tega melihat ada ayam disembelih, ada sapi disembelih gitu. Zaman mudanya suruh kerja, tuanya bukan dipiara dengan baik malah disembelih. Saya rasa itu kan tidak adil. Nah, kemudian saya berpikir, ini jangan-jangan salah nih kalau makan begini. Nah, selama pencarian bisa didekati dengan dua cara. Dengan sains, dengan basic agama. Yang saya, saya ikuti adalah, kebetulan saya adalah seorang katolik. Nah, saya coba baca, baca, cari apa sih sebenarnya e, jalan hidup yang benar mulai dari aspek makanannya. Nah, kemudian di Alkitab saya temukan bahwa e, dilihat dari awal penciptaan, kalau kita kembalikan ke arah penciptaan kita, yaitu Tuhan kita, ya pasti benar kan logikanya begitu. Nah, saya baca di situ. Hari pertama apa? Adalah terjadi pemisahan terang dan gelap dulu. Kemudian hari kedua pembentukan cakrawala yaitu pemisahan antara udara dan air. Kemudian daratan dan setelah ada daratan kemudian ada tanaman. Kemudian diciptakan pagi dan petang. Kemudian diciptakan hewan, selanjutnya manusia. Kemudian hari ketujuh adalah finish. Ini menurut kepercayaan saya anut. Ya. Ini ada di Alkitab adalah pada kejadian bab 1 ayat 29. Uh, Tuhan mengatakan dengan firmanya bahwa lihatlah aku memberikan kepadamu ini kepadamu masih kepada manusia segala tumbuh-tumbuhan yang berbiji di seluruh muka bumi dan segala pohon-pohonnya buahnya berbiji dan ditegaskan di situ itulah yang menjadi makananmu ya jadi di sini sudah tegas bahwa itulah jadi makananmu adalah nomor satu adalah buah-buahan dulu nah, kemudian selanjutnya pada kejadian bab 3 ayat 18 Semak duri dan rumput duri yang akan dihasilkan bagimu dan tumbuh-tumbuhan di padang yang akan menjadi makananmu. Jadi setelah ke- pertama dikatakan buah-buahan, kedua adalah sayur karena di sini sebuah adalah tumbuh-tumbuhan. Jadi kesimpulannya adalah bahwa sejak awal penciptaan sudah diciptakan manusia adalah menjadi makhluk vegetarian. Gitu. Nah, kemudian setelah ada terjadi pembunuhan, darah tertumpah di bumi, lah saat itulah manusia jadi ganas. Mulai ada pembunuhan, darah tertumpah di bumi, termasuk juga mulai makan hewan. Ya, kalau zaman sekarang paling gampang ya dilihat lah. Banyak yang makan yang namanya tempat B. Ya. B1 itu apa sih? Saya dulu tidak tahu. B1 ternyata biang. Ternyata anjing dimakan. Wah, ngeri. Dengar begitu. Karena saya itu pencinta anjing. Kedua ada B2. Apa sih B2? Babi ternyata. Tuh. Ya, babi makan, babi. kemudian anjing dimakan. Ketiga bahwa ternyata bayi itu juga dimakan. Ya, empat lagi. Yang enggak, ada yang tidak makan babi, tapi ya waktu Pak Abi saya bilang babu dimakan ya kan kacau lagi. Jadi ruwet. Babu dimakan pada bujang, babu diterjang ya udah susah lah. Makin lama makin acur e, manusia itu. Karena sejak awal sudah tidak menuruti apa yang sudah ditetapkan oleh yang kuasa itu ya. Nah ini kita pandang bahwa tadi eh, mungkin sudah diantarkan oleh pembicara dahulu bahwa industri peternakan itu menyumbang kira-kira sekitar 18-20 persen dari total emisi yang diproduksi oleh eh, manusia. Kemudian transportasi adalah sekitar 13 persen. Nah, dari sini ketahuan bahwa sebenarnya sumber utama bukan emisi dari karbon dari pembakaran mesin, tapi justru pada induksi peternakan yang akan menyediakan kita eh, ketersediaan daging hewan. Nah, Tadi juga sudah diumumkan juga bahwa mengurangi konsumsi daging dengan memperbanyak konsumsi produk pertanian adalah salah satu cara agar kita bisa menyelamatkan bumi. Jadi kita sudah hanya final countdown, makin lama makin turun tinggal habis. Cuma moga-moga kita yang jadi vegan itu selamat semua. Ya, karena ditolongi yang kuasa itu. Ya, Dan kita tidak tahu ya. Sehat, sehat, sehat. Dan tapi kalau sehat, otaknya benar ya. Moga-moga doanya diterima ya. Nah, sekarang saya masuk ke sedikit ke, ke bidang kesehatan yang saya dalami bahwa manusia itu sebenarnya paling gampang dilihat dari e, kalau sakit apa, kalau sehat apa ya. kalau dikatakan sakit itu ditemukan bahwa pada pemeriksaan darah atau urinnya dia pasti bersifat asam nah asam itu apa? kalau e, di ilmu kimia bahwa 7 netral di bawah 7 adalah asam di atas 7 adalah alkali Hampir semua pasien kanker yang saya temui pH-nya pasti empat setengah atau lima setengah. Jadi jauh di bawah e, pH ideal yang dikatakan sih adalah tujuh poin tiga lima sampai tujuh poin empat lima. Termasuk juga penyakit-penyakit yang katanya kronis tidak bisa disembuhkan itu kuncinya cuma satu. Jadikanlah darah anda alkali. Lah caranya gimana? Gampang. Yang asam kita singkirkan, yang basah kita tambahkan. Kan cuma gitu. 
dan nanti berjalan dengan waktu dia akan memutar roda yang katanya sakit itu menjadi sehat kembali ingat bahwa manusia itu adalah suatu komputer super komputer yang luar biasa pinternya kasih makan yang benar selesai dia akan ngatur sendiri semua cuman kalau e, di sini peran seorang kalau tenaga kesehatan yang bidang bidangnya herbal hanya bisa mempercepat proses artinya apa kalau sakit liver jadi vegetarian sembuh sembuh cuma lama tapi dengan adanya tenaga herbalis ini kita bisa oh herbal ini spesial untuk liver untuk membantu organ lain itu bisa kesembuhan dipercepat sangat dipercepat tapi kalau tidak kenal dokter udah tidak usah tinggal vegetarian aja pasti sembuh kok itu tinggal tunggu waktu dan percaya ya percaya ya saya akan sembuh dengan begini ya. Oh bilang penyakit kanker katanya penyakit yang tidak bisa disembuhkan ya sini tak kasih waktu tiga bulan mesti baik ya nah, itu tadi pesan saya di sini tolong jangan makan yang asem jangan makan daging kemudian makanan yang diolah dengan minyak dan dikeringkan itu pasti asem gula itu asem karena makan kemasan itu pasti pengawetnya asem asem benzoat asem sitrat ya dimakan aja saya susah asem itu tidak benar loh. Tapi kemudian ada pertanyaan, apakah yang namanya jeruk itu kan asem, apa dalam tubuh jadi asem? Tidak, itu hebatnya. Kalau tumbuhan, walaupun dia pertama asem, tapi di dalam tubuh dia berubah jadi basah. Rasa asem itu membawakan uh, dia nanti harus berperan di sini. Gitu. Itu jadi rasa asem itu bukan di dalam jadi asem, tapi menarik ke zat-zat aktif yang ada di tumbuhannya rasanya asem itu pada liver. Gitu. Ternyata dia di dalam tubuh bukan asem, jadi kita minum jeruk pun boleh. Dia diubah akan jadi basah. Khususnya setelah minum e, cari buah yang asam itu kita e, olahraga. Dia akan terbakar dan menjadi basah semua. Ya jadi tidak ada yang salah makan sayur buah walaupun itu rasanya asam pasti di tubuh akan menjadi basah dan itu adalah identik dengan kita menjadi sehat mental dan sehat fisik itu. Nah jika anda mengalami gejala ini berarti badan badan anda sudah mulai asam. Coba dilihat dulu. sering kembung konsipasi ini banyak banyak sekali di, di klinik cuman cuman penyakit kayak gini tapi muter-muter dokter berapa orang nggak pernah ada yang sembuh cuman sekedar kembung konsipasi pada obatnya gampang banget jadi vegetarian selesai dalam, dalam waktu tiga minggu biasanya nah, ini berat badan terus nambah situasi pasti asem di dalam tubuhnya ya kemudian sering flu batuk pilek orang lain kena hujan sedikit langsung ko lihat temennya di sebelahnya flu kita ketularan. Lah yang benar ada kita kena kena hujan satu jam harusnya tidak apa-apa. Kerja sampai jam jam 12 malam itu juga tidak apa-apa itu. Itu berarti namanya berarti dia badannya biasanya sifatnya tuh basah. Kemudian sariawan yang tidak sembuh-sembuh. Ini juga katanya kurang vitamin C, minum vitamin C sehari 2 gram mana ada yang sembuh. Kalau memang karena sat, sifat asam tidak mungkin dia sembuh. Itu. Kemudian udah lelah kurang energi ini juga. Jadi bangun pagi bukannya seger. Tapi lihat bantal pengennya masih ambruk terus. Saya mau pengen tidur. Nah berarti badan itu pasti asem gitu. Ya kulit terus bermasalah. Kulit merah-merah atau suatu penyakit yang namanya psoriasis, eksim gitu. Ya kalau psoriasis katanya tidak bisa sembuh. Nah padahal dengan rubah pola makan sembuh. Itu antara 3-4 bulan sembuh dia. Kemudian alergi kronis, hipertensi itu. Hipertensi juga dalam waktu 3 minggu. Kalau vegetarian vegan mesti sembuh. 95% itu. Kemudian kolesterol, asam urat, gula, gula darah tinggi ini juga bau badan dan mulut atau kaki. Jadi tidak usah pakai aplikasi luar, tapi dengan makan sesuatu yang sifatnya membersihkan, dia akan sembuh total. Dan sifatnya adalah permanen, sembuh, benar-benar sembuh. Kemudian nyari sendi dan otot, terutama pada waktu bangun pagi. Bangun, kemudian rasa kaku semua badannya, mau gerak susah, itu berarti badannya pasti asam. Nah, kemudian dari hadirin saya rasa mesti pengen tahu, taunya asam gimana sih? Dari gejala ini, silakan Anda cek dengan e, kertas lakmus. Lakmus itu kalau dicelup ke tempat asam, dia warna merah. Kalau basah, dia warna biru. Nah, pagi buang air kecil. Kalau sudah punya kertas lakmus itu, buang air kecil. Pada midstream, jadi e, yang urinnya yang tengah itu tampung. Tampung, kemudian dicelupkan. Warnanya apa itu? Kalau warna merah, kita pasti asam. Nah, silakan sakit. <laughs> Nah kalau warnanya biru terus, sembuh. Tunggu waktu, pasti akan baik itu. Nah ini makanan pembentuk basah, semua. Semua sayur buah adalah pembentuk basah. Plus mineral. Ya. Nah ini kita tunjukkan bahwa apotek Tuhan itu luar biasa. Ini sudah diteliti secara ilmiah. Dan kedua, kita lihat secara mudah aja. Ternyata itu tidak usah, usah sekolah sampai S3. 
lihat aja sebentar sudah tahu langsung itu karena kita tuh ternyata tuh sudah diberi suatu sinyal bahwa ini untuk apa ini untuk apa tuh apotek Tuhan sungguh menakjubkan ya nah, lihat ya potongan wortel nih. seperti mata Tuhan tengahnya atau pupilnya kemudian pikirnya atau irisnya ya gambaran orang tengah dan harga besar dia sangat menyerupai iris dan pupil mata dan memang sense membuktikan bahwa wortel sangat bermanfaat untuk melancarkan peredaran darah dan fungsi sel reseptor mata Dan ini pasti saya gunakan pada orang yang mengalami sakit mata apapun deh, ya. Jadi yang buta total, buta parsial tuh, pasti akan saya gunakan wortel untuk bahan dasar terapi saya. Itu pasien saya buta dalam waktu tiga bulan setelah merubah jadi vegetarian gini, matanya melihat. Itu bukti nyata. Dan bukan satu orang ya, satu orang yang kebetulan mungkin. <tuh> ini sudah berapa orang? Merubah pola makan sembuh tuh. Ternyata gampang sekali tuh. Nah ini, ini uh, tomat. Ya, katanya tomat itu untuk biasanya orang tahunya untuk prostat ya. Tapi katanya untuk jantung itu bisa karena dia seakan-akan seperti bilik jantung ya. Ya ini ini untuk jantung juga karena dikatakan bahwa mengandung resveratrol. Ini walnut seperti brain, kacang walnut. Jadi kalau yang pikun-pikun takut pikun silakan cari walnut ini makan ya. Ini kidney, kidney beans kacang merah. Kalau ginjalnya bermasalah makan kacang merah. Bentuknya persis seperti ginjal. Ini seledri seperti bun, tulang. Jadi yang sakit tulang, sakit otot, e, rada nggak sendi, silakan cari seledri, makan yang banyak. Ya. Apokat, nah, ini seperti organ genital wanita. Ya. Jadi kalau dia tidak beres sama menstruasi sakit, silakan cari ini, makan yang banyak. Tuh. Ini e, fake tuh buah arah. Ini. Jadi kalau mando, impotensi, cari ini, makan. Ya. Nah ini ubi manis ini seperti pankreas jadi kalau orang diabetes makan manis boleh tapi dari ubi itu jaitun itu hidung telur jadi yang menstruasi tidak karuan itu silakan cari jaitun minyaknya boleh jaitunnya sendiri dimakan juga boleh ya ini bagi yang wanita kalau ada keluhan kelenjar payudara sakit pada waktu menstruasi atau apa silakan minum jeruk yang banyak karena riset itu dia mengandung limonin anti kanker payudara bawang merah ini sebagai pembuang toksin dalam sel memulihkan kerusakan dinding sel akibat radikal bebas. Nah ini sebenarnya untuk pembanding supaya anda tuh jadi vegetarian masih atas perhatian. Thank you, Dr. Budiono, for your enlightening presentation. Saya juga belum paham banget sih sebenarnya soal tubuh performing dan salah satu yang saya datang juga memang untuk mempelajari itu. Pengaruh antara vegan organik dan global warming itu memang saya ingin pelajari di sini. Kerja di entertainment itu jam waktunya nggak jelas ya dan itu harus ditunjang sama asupan makanan yang benar gitu. Ya mungkin dengan vegan organik ini bisa bisa menunjang kerja saya juga. Sekarang kayaknya masyarakat harus lebih pikiran terbuka ya untuk hidup sehat. Hi, I'm Fedi Nouriel. I'm an actor. Be veg, go green, and save the planet. Menarik sekali ya dari acara ini kita dibuka kesadarannya gitu dan mata kita akan keadaan global di dunia ini sekarang. Mudah-mudahan kita semakin peduli dengan bumi kita semakin bisa menjaga. Mudah-mudahan kita semakin banyak yang menjadi vegan, semakin banyak yang vegetarian. Jadi semakin sehat dunia. Be fake, go green, and save the planet! Thank you for your warm-hearted presence for today's episode of Words of Wisdom. Please join us again tomorrow for part four of Vegan Organic for Prosperity and to Save the Planet from Climate Change. Now, please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television for A Journey Through Aesthetic Realms, coming up next, right after Noteworthy News. We wish you joy, peace, and prosperity. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash WOW.